Uh, my name is Carolyn Wong, and I got into the film industry in 1986. It was really just by accident. I didn't go to film school. I moved here in Toronto from Victoria in 1986. And I started as a producer's assistant, production assistant, but my background is in still photography. So then I realized I didn't want to be in the office. So I, back then they had the Panavision camera course. So I thought that would tell me whether, you know, I can you know transition from stills to being an assistant. And so that was fine. And so I became an assistant and that eventually evolved into uh, shooting and then filmmaking. My life's evolved. You know, I don't really shoot anymore, but I'm also a filmmaker and I have made my own films, but I actually do a lot for the CSC to sustain the organization. So I help the organization on my own time. Um, you know, I coordinate their Instagram account. I help with the social media and wherever else. So that's what I'm contributing to the CSC slash the industry. Uh, my role as a cinematographer when I was shooting is, is to translate the story visually for the director. I mean, that's always it. Um, that's what I felt. That's the job. I didn't go to film school, so it wasn't like I was dying to be a cinematographer and it was my chosen path. I really kind of stumbled into it. So, and back in the late 80s, 90s, I mean, the only struggle was just getting work and getting training, but that sort of seemed to happen all right. I felt at a decent speed. Um, and shooting, when I was shooting, uh, we ha had the support of the Studio D for some things. I guess the struggles perhaps might have, I don't know, it was different back then in the 90s. You know, there wasn't such a female movement or, or in the sense of people realizing, oh, we can hire women. I know when I was shooting, I was probably one of the few shooters. I mean, there was you, Joan, and there was Zoe, and there was um, Susan Tro, and, you know, some others. But I know that I was probably the only Asian female in Canada. I was told that several times that, oh, because there were some people who were specifically looking for an Asian shooter. And so I was the one that would get flagged. So, but as in struggle, I mean, we probably there probably would have been more opportunities if people were just more neutral and fair. But it wasn't a struggle, though, personally. Like, I didn't feel a struggle because I, when I was assistant, I got a lot of work because I was good. And when I was shooting, it was, I was sort of in the network and it, you know, so there could have been unknown struggles because I didn't feel I was struggling. I don't, I don't know what's stopping them. I mean, I don't, I guess the, the stopping would be is just what's happening now as in like, well, hiring someone that doesn't look like you. You know, the whole um, white boy old, old school club. It's like, well, that's what it was from the 50s. That's what it was. And, and that's what it has to change is actually those cultural biases within the hires to hire someone that doesn't look like you or that is a woman. And that's almost like a re-education, almost like it's going to take half a generation. Really, I mean, but it's very um, aware. There's a lot of awareness now, so that might speed it up. I think that women can stop themselves if they're overthinking it. Like, just do it. You know, you can't sit there and whine and expect, okay, now it's like an awareness of women, so can I get an extra, you know, step up in that? Which, that extra step up would be just to hire them. But it's like, you can't lower standards. You still have to do the job. So I, I say to most you know, women that I know that are starting to shoot or they're shooting is just do the work and just be strong and believe in yourself and just keep it simple. Cause you know, just keep your head down and do it. And it will come because your work will speak for itself. And especially now because people are looking at the work opposed to, um, hiring, you know, men that look like them. As in having a child in the industry and how that affects, how it affected me. Um, I have such a different perspective because I didn't go to film school. And I have to reiterate that because it wasn't like, I'm gonna keep forging ahead as a cinematographer. I, I was a little bit more open. I'm not so, you know, my, half my soul wasn't sold into there. So, and then when your partner works in the industry and then you're sort of starting to shoot more and your family isn't in the same city. So that's a bit of a challenge because how do you pick up the slack? You might have a meeting one day, one week 
and then next week nothing you know you can't have a nanny full time i mean on 24 hour call it just doesn't work that way so i had fantasies of like oh i'll take a year off and then i'll go back to work <laughs> and it didn't happen because it just i didn't know how at the time you know because i was like 17 years ago i just i didn't i couldn't see you know perhaps if it was now i might have i might be more encouraged but i also didn't have the support here like to take up the slack of like oh can you take the kid for now you know for a couple hours i mean i just didn't have that so my life just evolved and so i actually really got involved with the community and a park group i actually co-founded a farmers market which i have been running for the last 12 years and but how i keep in the industry was you know gregor hagi had said they need some more board members at the csc and i thought maybe of you and i thought wow this is actually a good idea because i can keep involved and it's actually been very beneficial very fruitful and a lot of fun because you know what i'm doing for them now so it all things all seem to work out in a way that makes sense to me to your own life but perhaps if i did go to film school and i really had that dream and i wanted to be a cinematographer i would I would have approached things differently but for me it just it was just not like that <laughs> so it's not no, no it's not good or bad it's just it's just it was just different for me no one gave me advice i just kind of did it like you know i was a production assistant i was a camera trainee i was a camera assistant for many years and then my leap to shooting really came from and i'll be honest because at a certain point assisting like you think you want to shoot you know you're feeling creative because you're on set you're watching everything and i also felt that there was a lot of guys out there shooting shit and i thought well i might as well give it a try because i can shoot shit just like them so why not so that actually was one of the reasons why i started shooting you know i thought well you know so <laughs> I was mostly I don't know whether I had that time I was mostly just trying to get the shot. I mean there were moments I, I there, there wasn't just one but I know there were some jobs where I was on and and we accomplished a great dolly shot and done something and you're like oh okay you sort of realizing your capabilities as in like oh we did it but almost unknowingly because you know how you're just on set and you're just trying to you're just trying to do it it's all it's almost like a a zen thing that you're just sort of doing it cuz you know you've had all the prep and the talk and you know you've got the storyboard so you kind of know what's happening so sorry but there there, there wasn't one i'm afraid <laughs> um yeah well, watching the two film yeah the two um personal documentaries that i made yin yin jade love and howard i would say those are pretty highlights cuz they both did the film festival circuit they actually both won awards and got lots of accolades so those were you know kind of cool because i kind of evolved into a filmmaker you know from a cinematographer i kind of went more filmmaker and how has the industry changed from when i started well technically we know you know film to digital tape and then digital so that's like crazy i mean it just leaps and bounds um the industry general it, it, you know working your way up to the ranks is different it's not so much anymore like when i started and when you started you know we had to start at the bottom and work your way up and and there's nothing wrong with that hierarchy especially in camera or any department because you know more and you learn more and it makes you stronger now and it's really been the advent of digital is that you know you jump that whole thing and you can just start shooting and there's nothing wrong with that i think cuz some are skilled and they really know this is what they want to do and so they just go right there and and that's fine but that's a big difference there's not so much um working your way up the rung the ladder i think you still can but um that's a big difference it's just a big difference how you get into the industry how you work into the industry how things are made now right do some shooters now without that ha that have not had the training and going up the ladder does it affect them um not necessarily because at the same time as is camera technology is changing we have a new generation and they are computer savvy you know they can they can look at the side of the camera and it takes them half the time it would take me it's second nature so it works for that generation the only thing they perhaps don't have behind them is just 
the real understanding of just the basics of photography and just ratios and how to use a light meter. Most a lot of them don't know, even know what a light meter is or, and how to use it. But just those fun, the, the fundamentals, which is, I think, valuable. You know, so it's... And also media, just social media and just that has all changed at the same time. So it's kind of, you can't, not necessarily. I mean, at first I thought you could maybe say, okay, they lost out because it didn't have the training. But in a way it's different. It's just so different, you know, and it's so open. And then we have all the internet and what is being shown there. And there's such, there's so many things to watch and so many levels of quality of visuals it's kind of like so many places to learn yeah you a lot of them will learn all, they'll, they'll just sit at home and look at the youtubes and they can learn a lot in their shooting so they, that's something that's different so not to say there there is no there's still worth to working your way up like from training you know there is still worth to that but um it's just a different playing field the playing field is different and it's like okay you know they'll learn and if they have it you know, and they're not necessarily just cinematographers. They might be more of a visual person, but they can get that visual onto a camera quicker because of the technology is easy and it's accessible. You know, you can shoot on your iPhone. Well, the changes which are happening now is just having more women, you know, and it takes people just hiring and, and getting over their prejudice that they may be aware they have or they may not be aware that they have. You know, I grew up, in the industry working along men. And I had a good time. It was one of the boys. And that's always that that whole terminology of one of the boys is is not gonna go away. But it's um, you know, the change is, yeah, just well, we don't even have to have an issue about women on crew. Like it just happens. And it's women take it's taking women too to hire women, right? And men to hire women and just mix it up because then you have a balanced set and you won't have any you know, issues. And, and the women just have to just do it and step up and just, just do it and not be intimidated because women are more emotional than men and that's what can trip us up or not. No, I think maybe just an, another one of my personal dogs. <laughs> so I have a trilogy. So that's, that's probably it. And I'm, I'm not a prolific filmmaker, but I feel that the, the few that I make are good. <laughs> because we have the movement of getting more women on set, but then there's also people of color, right? Cause I, you know, and on the screen as well. Cause I don't, I rarely see myself, although there's subcultures and there's strong industries actually in Asia that now, but as in just your day to day, you know, we've got the black and the white. So you always get, you know, that's what justifies everything, the black and the white. It's like, well, no, there's in between and there's Asians and we're there. So I would want to see more Asians you know, behind the screen, you know, and in front of the, the camera, just because, you know, everyone's got an Asian friend in real life. <laughs> like there's always somebody, you know, cause I have a lot of, you know, Caucasian girlfriends and that's fine, but there's always a, always a couple of Asians mixed in. So that's what I would want to see on, on, on everywhere. And just, you know, just take the barriers away and just get over yourself. And for women too, to just go forge ahead and do it. And just, you know, that your work will speak for itself because in the industry it's freelance and you're only as good as your last job and getting along with people <laughs> but not in a sub submissive like passive way it's just being constructive and there is a lot of women this is actually what i should say is that there's a lot of women shooters out there but their their attitude towards self-promotion is different than than men they're actually, women do generally just kind of do it and they just kind of want to do it quietly. They don't want to make a big fuss, but it's like, well, it's not about ego or making a big fuss. It's just like, if someone comes to you and wants to help encourage exposure of you, then, then go for it. You know, cause when I was camera assisting, you know, if they were looking for like a female Asian assistant, I'd be like, I'll take it. Like I, I don't have, I didn't have any issues why they were picking me. Cause I knew I was also good. I mean, they're not going to pick me just because of those two elements, I also have to do the job, right? Yeah, men, yeah, women do things differently than men and they approach it differently. I think women are don't blow their horn enough and not in an egotistical way. I think they just don't, you know? I mean, I look at some of our female members or I also, I think maybe because the profile of the CSC is rising a little bit. So some of them have covered all the word work and 
have applied for their letters, which is really great because I'd never heard of them before. But there's, granted, there's a lot of cinematographers we've never heard before. But the women have to, you know, step up a little bit and just go, I am here, you know, and get their letters. But, you know, that's from a perspective of a society, of course, because there's some out there. I think women need to be just a little bit more forward. Not in a aggressive, negative way, but just, you know, don't be shy. Don't be shy. They were just, you know, there's a bravado that's mm -hmm. a genetic thing or something, you know, and so, well, and I get that. Cultural. And it's cultural support. They have yeah. Yeah, cultural support, exactly. Whereas in like, you can do anything you want. Mm -hmm. Whereas in women, think about it, in the 50s, 60s, you're gonna get married, you know, drop out of high school. You might go to school for a while, but when you get married, you drop out, have kids. So that's in our culture. And so we also have to like, get out of that. Absolutely. You know, so it's a real just to, and you know, it'll just take a, half a generation. I always laugh when it's like, you know, why are they so angry? It's like, yeah, of course we're fucking angry. Just because we're just like, finally, like, you know what? We have, we can voice ourselves now because we have the support, right? And we can be angry, we can shout and scream. Just because it's just like, you just had enough, mm -hmm. right? It's like, come on, like get over it, right? There's still stuff going on.